me this one. Yeah. Okay. S right. <sighs> okay. My timer is wrong. Oh, it's okay. It's, it's good. Okay, so as mentioned, my name is Gonzalo Cruz. I'm a first year student on the doctoral pro, uh, program here at MUTRI. Um, I'm, I'm in the applied research. Um, so, my formal background is not music. Is it was forever the visual arts and architecture when, then, when I went to, to college. But in 98, when I went to college, I fell in love with bagpipes and I can't really tell why. So, al although I did my master's in architecture, I was mostly doing music and researching bagpipes. And then eventually building them and setting a workshop in 2010 to, to make uh, instruments full time. Um, in 2019, I packed and came here, and as you can see, I packed, I packed very light. It was only two tons, uh, because I brought my uh, workshop with me, which hopefully uh, you are welcome to join us on the 28th of March, or on the 28th next, for a little opening of the workshop with some food and drinks and music, hopefully. Uh, it's in Ettelahaga, so it's quite near. Okay, so the purpose of this presentation is maybe a little less um, technical in terms of what is my work plan and my work research and more to try to promote the subject, uh, offer a little bit of a foundation knowledge on bagpipes that will then allow us to have a discussion, which is what I hope we do. And of course, ask for your support because that's, I, I think that's what the academia does. So, um, what is a bagpipe? But really, so, so this is when I start working, right? So, of course we all think about this, right? Whoops. This. No, I'm going backwards. Yeah, right? Uh, and it was the same for me when I started, like 20 years ago. I mean, bagpipes are in Scotland. I didn't even know that there were bagpipes in my own country. So that's, that's kind of normal. systems, we can speak about bagpipes, okay? So, this is a, an instrument that is very, very much suited for Scottish music, and it has um, a lots of, several limitations to the other kinds of music, but is perfect to play Scottish music. So, what is a bagpipe? Uh, a bagpipe, to have a bagpipe, we need a bag, right? And when we say bagpipe, what we are really saying is just a reed instrument with a bag. So inside here is a air reservoir. This is just a cover. And so we must have the right materials. We have, must have materials to make the reeds and materials to make the, the bag, right? 
So the bag would be animal skin, sued leather, but, and some, some other strange things like bladder, or now I discover, I didn't know, in Estonia, seal stomach. So, yeah, so it, it's a natural reservoir. In the case of the goat, you actually have the head and two of the front legs. So it's quite convenient to put stuff there. So we, we can go all the way to three. To make it more convenient, we use stocks, right? So that means that in that example, they just tie directly the melodic tubes to the, to the bag, but then it's, it's, it's a pain. Whenever you want to reach the, the reed, you have to untie it. So it became very convenient to have stocks. And in the stocks, we can actually put what makes the sound. And because we have three, one, two legs and one neck, why not have an extra polyphonic thingy making noise, a pedal note or a drone? Okay, so reeds can be cylindrical, uh, can be single reeds or double reeds. And again, the same material skein, of course, now we have plastics. Okay, so what about in Finland? Um, only Timo Lesio wrote something about bagpipes in Finland. And um, he addressed several possibilities of the origin of the instrument, but it's, it's conjectural, as everything in this field, a little bit. Even the possibility of actually the, fin the, the Swedish bagpipe actually being a Finnish bagpipe that migrated there somehow. Um, there's also the etymological approach, but I'm not sure that instruments follow the same path as languages. Uh, I can have the word shoe and maybe I don't have shoes, right? But I know what it is because I've seen it somehow. Uh, but it's also a very, very interesting approach that should be followed. Okay, but then there's iconography. That's, that's what I'm in love with. So you, can, you cannot see you cannot see it clearly, but uh, that's the drone over the shoulder there, and then there's the bag and so on. It's not a good picture, and then the bag, the shanter, the blow piece, possibly the drone. I had to visit this myself. My research only started in September, so. But here, uh, we can see it better. So, so maybe by now you can help me a little bit. So. Let me show you something else. So you, you heard this instrument. Okay, the same tradition has this instrument. The fingering is the same. The limitations of the instrument are the same, but it sounds like this. And why is that? It's because this uses a cylindrical system. That means that inside this, this chanter I'm playing here, there's a cylindrical bore all the way down. And here, we have a conical system. There's a, a cone that opens towards the end or flares quite substantially. Okay, so, are you gonna, yeah. So, so we start to have this dichotomy between Conical system and cylindrical system. Cylindrical is good because it's silent. Conical is bad because it's loud. So again, this notion that, well, all bagpipes are loud and obnoxious. That's not true. You know, and in fact, in some traditions, they are not loud at all. Okay, so that's very important because you see the kind of drones, little drones that we have here or here, another cylindrical system. Although it flares quite nicely here, it's fake. It's just because it, it's nicer. It's cylindrical all the way through. So you see, because I have less volume, I have less volume also on the drums and, and narrower bores inside. 
and th that's not the case with this, this instrument or this instrument, which is in the conical system as well. Okay, so now that you know that, let's look at the iconography. Is it a conical system or a cylindrical system? So when you will look at, at that, is it conical or is it cylindrical? It's conical, right? Because if it's conical on the outside, it's called conical on the inside because you have to keep the thickness of the wood the same along the tube. It wouldn't work if it's highly conical on the outside and cylindrical in the inside because the finger holes will start to have what, what we could call chimney heights, larger and taller and taller and taller until a point where nothing is really, no air is coming out, okay? So once we know that, we start to take iconography seriously. Most people say, oh, it's fantasy. It's the, I mean, they're artists. They can portray whatever they want. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. For instance, this guy didn't really know how many finger holes or, he's a little bit lost there, but, but yeah. But, but it's conic. I mean, he knew what he saw. And, and it's quite a big drone open in the end. So it's loud. And this iconography is here in Finland. Okay, so that's not a biggie because icono iconography travels and artists copy iconography. So there's some concerns that although this is in Finland, for instance, this is a book of, lo uh, book of laws, although this is in Finland, there's also the Swedish connection, but let's do that another time. Although this is in Finland, this could be actually a German depiction, right? And that, that, that quite happens. Okay, but I have an issue with that. Because this is the Estonian torpil that reached our days, cylindrical system. Um, seal stomach. So, if, because it's a stomach, they use the reservoir in a different way, right? It's more convenient just to put the drone there. There, it looks like a droneless bagpipe without a drone, but they actually handle the drone by shoving it under the armpit. The drone is there. They still do it today. Okay. And then the sack pipa. So, what the hell is that? Okay, it's German. Okay, so I want to see this iconography, but it doesn't sh seem to show up. Maybe there was lack of interest. Maybe these instruments are much younger, which I don't think so. Okay, so that's interesting. So, there's a laughing guy there already, because he's, he's up there, I'm gonna shame him. Uh, so, why am I here? Because there's an interest in bagpipes in Finland that most people are not aware of. So, I'm here because of people like them. Uh, and they tried to do Finnish music with an instrument that suited their repertoire. And, and, and luckily, there was an artist, Uriana, that made these bagpipes for, for, for them. But again, this looks more like the Swedish sackpip, and that looks like more the Torupil, and, and of course it makes sense, it's the instruments that we know. But Uriana had a motive to, to do it like that, and you'll see it further, further on. Okay, so I must hurry up. The research gaps, we've went through them. Uh, we don't really know. That's the problem. And not all of avenues have been exhausted. Uh, so there's a void of information, and, and, and then there's a little bit of shrugging of the shoulders, saying like, oh, no, there's nothing in Finland. There's nothing in Finland, really. Nothing going on in terms of bagpipes. So my research. Um, so what was the instrument like, if we can find it out? And what is the instrument today? Is there something happen? There's a little bit of things happening, but at least we should document it so that it doesn't become a mistake further down the road, like a tradition that was kind of, it popped up out of nothing. And what would people have it be in the near future? So the, the, first, questions, the first question is more of a forensic nature. We can look for the evidences and try to, to rebuild it. But the other two have other dire implications. What makes it finish, for instance? And for that, we need to involve musicians and we, we need to involve the citizens. So I started this initiative that I called Find It or Find It initiative, uh, and which has collected already support from musicians. And we're, the idea is to find it, build it, and play it, right? So this is the public cause of my, of my scientific research. And the research are, outputs are actually 
to collect all this information in an arch archive that people can use. Uh, measure, measuring instruments, uh, more than just keep them in the museum. And, uh, and then replicate or build something that uh, the musicians in 2020 are interested in using. It could be an historical informed replica for some people, but for other people it's something that they can do music nowadays. Okay, so there's nothing in Finland, except for a 14, 1400s bagpipe piece in the Turco Museum. And when I knew about that, I went like, well, you have something that most European countries don't have, because as you know, wood rottens, and we don't have much of anything from that period. And you do because, I was told, the Turku soil keeps uh, organic matter. So, okay, and I think, I was told it was Timo Lacio that recognized this as being an actual piece of a musical instrument, and I'm, I'm glad it did so. So me and Marcus uh, went there, we were very well received, and my experience here in Finland is that everyone is very open to share knowledge and to, to exchange collaborations, so we were extremely well received. Of course we could measure, of course we could see it, of course we could take, take pictures. And so we did. We, we took pictures and we measured it. And between you and I, we played it. Uh, and then I did the drafting. And normally people don't do the drafting. I always, I always say the oncologist always sees cancer, right? Because it's, it's his speciality. And I'm a, an architect by, by formal training, so I go this step, I go in this direction because it's my know-how. And it's good because once you measure it, yeah, once you measure it, what do you do? You build it, right? So that's the next step. And that's the core of my research, actually. All the other thing, gathering information, is that just a legwork that we must do in order to build it with a certain degree of confidence. And after you build it, you can like poke holes on it and make things that you will never do to a piece in the museum, right? You can borrow it, you can lend it, you can let musicians kind of discuss it, put it on the table, it's something that people can gather around. Okay, so one last tease about this whole, is it German, is it Swedish, okay? So I was measuring this piece and then in the internet a, a photography popped up that someone actually a long story, a mentor in Germany showed me like, I don't know, 15 years ago. And I recognize it, it's a very interesting iconography. It's in Cornwall, a hundred years more or less after the Turco piece. Of course it's a double, double chanter instrument, it means that you have a chanter for a left hand, a chanter for a right hand, you see there? Oopsie, sorry, sorry. So a chanter for the left hand, a chanter for the right hand. That's, that exists in Italy and other places, so that's not strange. We can deal with that. Uh, it doesn't have any drones, apparently. Mouse blown, some kind of stock, probably a common stock. It means that the same stock takes the two pieces in, in here. Yeah, interesting, right? So it has nothing to do with us, because it's double chanter. It's... But, interesting. It almost looks like the piece that we have in the museum. And this thing here, the way it ends, like this thick piece of wood that goes there. Interesting, straight through this ring here, then it opens, poof. Interesting. But this is not a shanter, right? No finger holes, this is a drone. So, I measured it. And I replicated, but I knew what was going to happen because when you measured it and you look at the, at the, at the measurements, it's going to be loud. It's not closed in the end, it's open, it even has this resonator here. And then the bore, it's seven-ish millimeters, that's big. So, that's quite high, quite loud for a drone. So, I wouldn't put it in a sec pipa. I wouldn't put it in a, a German Ulmelschen that you didn't hear, or a, or a small... Yeah, so I, I need some punch to play with this drone, right? Well, so, this, isn't, this is just a demonstration, just for us to hear something, right? 
just take another bagpipe that could cope. And also, it's very interesting that well, they, they didn't have any measurement tools at the time. Well, they probably did, but they didn't know the circumference of the Earth, so they didn't know what a centimeter or a meter was. And God, did they get it right? Or did we continue the trend? You know, it's the same measurements, even. And it's because I make bagpipes, when I start measuring, I recognize, oh, that's what I do normally, 25 millimeters, great. 23, yeah, that looks good. So everything, of course, they didn't have the centimeter, but they had a notion of proportion, right? This is half than that, and, and it kind of looks good for me, to me. Okay, so <laughs> they didn't have sliding, uh, s tuning slides. You saw me trying to tune the, the instrument by changing the length of the drone. They didn't have that. In fact, in Latvia, they still don't. In Estonia, they introduced it. In Sweden, they introduced it. But So that, that means that whenever I want to, to tune my drone, I have to stop, go to the reed, meddle with the reed. So this won't be totally. And then the, the connections are conical. So they weren't meant to tune either. They just stick there. So let's see if this holds here. Okay, should I play it? Or, yeah? 25, right? 25 minutes, great. Okay, so let's see. Loud, right? It's not completely in tune. So it's a little bit on the low spectrum, so let's see if I can meddle with it a little bit. It will never, never, ever, ever be perfect, because I, I mean, it's a guessing game, it's not really tuning, but they, they manage somehow. Don't stop on me now. No. Yeah. I mess with it and now it stops. Do you want it to play or to be in tune? It's your, your choice. You have to. Maybe, maybe play, right? Something. Let's see. I have to work on my finished repertoire. I have nothing.